we have Nicholas Kroll, who's a sales executive. Um, where is Nicholas? All right. So we have Nicholas, and today we're talking to us about practical applications of cloud technology education. And we have like 10 seconds comfort break, and Nicholas, you can come up to the stage. All right. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. And I realize I'm standing between you and lunch, so <laughs> I'll try not to waste your time. <coughs> Excuse me, waste your time too much. Um, I'm with a company called Exxon. Um, very quickly, we are also part of the Japanese conglomerate NEC on this continent, and we own our own public cloud platform called Wingu. Anybody in the room know what Wingu means? Anybody here from Kenya? It means cloud. Yes, exactly, in Swahili. Okay. Great. Um, I'm, an, I'm in sales. I'm an account manager. I'm not technical, so please don't hammer me with your technical questions afterwards. Some fair warning. Um, but I specialize, I've taken the remit to look after the educational landscape from a technology perspective uh, from, from Exxon and to see and to develop how we can add value using technology into the educational community. We work with uh, schools, colleges, and even up to as high as national research education networks across Africa. So that's where we play um, and across all kind of technology from networking to uh, data center storage and availability, to public safety and security, um, renewable resource energy and stuff like that as well. Okay, so across the board. So yes, we have Wingu, like I said, we're a public cloud platform. We're, uh, it's built on, uh, the, uh, it's an Ubuntu OpenStack certified public cloud. So uh, basically South Africa's version of Amazon Web Services. All right, and a lot of uh, benefits to that as well, as we'll talk about. I spoke, we, we play in the networking space from layer one to layer eight, which is the chair keyboard interface. Data center, power, security on many levels, from network security and our, and our partners fortunately here today, to um, sort of facial recognition and behavioral, uh, live behavioral analysis with facial recognition technology that NEC brings to the party as well. And we have a 24 seven services division that looks after all of our customers across the breadth of the technology that we do across Sub-Saharan Africa. So everyone has their own definition of cloud. And I'll try and keep mine simple because I believe it's, it's kind of universal. It's remote IT infrastructure, isn't it? So whatever you want to use, you don't, own the you don't own the technology, you don't own the equipment, but you use it in some way. Essentially, it consists of compute power, data storage, and the software that we use. Okay. Uh, that just puts the three flavors of cloud into perspective a little bit. It's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Now, most of us use cloud or consume cloud in some way already. Uh, social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook, that is software as a service. Um, infrastructure as a service, this is, when, this is like Dropbox. Okay, you're uploading uh, into that type of thing. Cloud being a fantastic driver and a facilitator for digital transformation. Now in education, we've heard today, this is what everyone's talking about and thinking about. You know, the transformation from a blackboard and a textbook to digital media in whatever flavor you choose. Five different things that, that digital transformation kind of encompasses right, and things that we need to uh, sort of concentrate on it and not leave out in this journey. And the first is digital educators. How to empower, we've spoken about empowering teachers, teaching them how to use technology for benefit. Digital students, of course, how to be a remote learner, how to learn from the comfort of your home. Uh, everyone knows, and, and I mean, the flavor of education, higher education, especially over the last while, has of course been hashtag fees must fall. And uh, you know, a concept of that or, or a, a result of that, students couldn't go to campus, couldn't attend physical <laughs> live lectures. So what do you do? You go on a WebEx, you have a Skype call with your lecturer. All right, you digest digital content as a student. Digital skills, this is something we need to grow. Digital skills of the educators, of the students, of the people who are creating the content. Um, historically, it's fantastic. Textbooks, written, printed, distributed. 
right? Now, it's a lot more effective, a lot more efficient, a lot more wide-reaching if you have the skill to create digital content. And of course, with social media, distributing that content is child's play. Lastly, access to services 24 hours a day. Are you studying at Genisa? Are you living in you know, Cape Town? Or are you living in Cape Canaveral? Or are you living in China? Should it matter? It doesn't really, does it? Okay. If your content and your systems are up and running all the time and they're in the cloud, then everyone has access all the time. Okay. So that's basically how I think cloud really plays in the, in, the, in the digital transformation. Having things up and running all the time and always available. Okay. In education, of course, cloud addresses some challenges and, and there are many challenges within the education space which technology can help address. Of course, cost, probably number one. All right. Cost of access to education. Cost of providing education. All right. Cost of, uh, talking about technology, cost of IT equipment. Now, is there a budget? How do I how do I deal with these type of things? Compliance and security is another one. Uh, the Protection of Personal Information Act, which is coming live now, that has far-reaching consequences to anybody keeping other people's data. ID numbers, credit card numbers, anything like that. Security, we don't really need to speak about more than what's already been said today. I mean, the threat landscape is vast. The scale of the content, the scale of the reach, um, when I talk about scale, I can also say, how, you know, from a Wi-Fi infrastructure, uh, Rakas are the partner here today. When you're on a university campus, how many students are trying to connect to the network at one time? Possibly thousands. All right, that's very, very challenging. Number one, I think, like I said, cost is, 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 is you know, if you, if you can sort out the cost issue, uh, the rest of the issues actually become a lot more manageable, don't they? Okay. Using cloud, the, the, the main driver of cloud is turning your spend as an educational institution, which has a role knock-on effect, okay, from a capital expenditure, buy your equipment today, you think you're buying the right thing, into operational expenditure. Okay? Pay for it as you consume it. Right. And how much is enough? Again, do I buy a server with 100 gigabits, uh, you know, gigabytes of RAM? Or do I, you know, and is that way overscaled or underscaled for my needs right now? With cloud, you just grow as you need it to. All right. How do you administer your IT resources as an institution of higher learning? How many staff do you need? Do you need to pay salaries to do this? Or do you simply buy the service from a cloud provider? Do you have to worry about your own security? Or do you let your cloud provider worry about that for you? Your data security and your data uh, sovereignty and things like that. Do you need to worry about how you store your data, how you back up your data? And, and in educations of, uh, institutions of education, that is, it shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be educating your students, providing that service, the thing that you're good at, that the cloud providers and the IT people worry about the things that they're good at. Kind of touched on this already, physical equipment versus the cloud. With physical kit, you're stuck. You buy equipment, your finance guy says you need to depreciate that and use it for the next three to five years, and that's it. If you need more, sorry. If you need, you know, if you've bought too much, well, you wasted money. And next time, you won't get the same budget. So putting something in the cloud allows you to turn up your spend as you go along. In the same way, capacity planning. You know, from a from a, a server perspective, if you have uh, learning management software, educational curriculum software, you know, how much. How many students can hit that portal before it falls over? Once you see that usage start to climb, what can you do in the cloud? You can just increase the resources available and your platform is stable. Not like, you know, everyone remembers when the uh, online enrollments for grade one came about. Okay, terrible. Yeah, everyone hit the website, the website fell over. Okay, if they had a, a flexible, elastic infrastructure, it wouldn't have happened. Okay. So the performance and the user experience, specifically with students. I mean, you know, if your students are trying to access your content, but it's slow and they can't do it and the video won't run nicely, they're going to just abandon that page. That's the age we live in today. Okay, very, very, very impatient. If I'm on a website, I click on something, 
It takes more than five or ten seconds for that link to load. Um, I just abandon the page. I move on to something else very quickly. I don't think I'm abnormal in that way. Okay. The stakeholders that this is going to affect. Okay. The partners, like yourselves, hosting content. Where you host it? On your own infrastructure? And how much is that costing you? What are the implications? All right. Institutions, you know, as a, as running your admin as a university. You know, how difficult is that? When do you need more resources or less? And obviously the individuals, the students and the educators using technology. Cloud, I think, is a fantastic facilitator to make that easier and much more cost effective moving forward. Okay. Practical applications of the cloud. Many universities can join together, or many institutes can join together to host content and do things. Okay, so you can do things together on the same platform, but still having your different areas or, or your content belonging to yourself separated. You can use very clever things. Cost savings again. You can put your learning management systems in the cloud, your content in the cloud. And fantastic for test and development environments, like for these you know, incubators teaching kids how to code and that type of thing. Fantastic. They spin things up, they try it, they, they, it doesn't work, they just cancel it. And you're only paying for your 30 seconds of usage as opposed to paying month by month annually or buying equipment. Okay. Things like um, assignment submissions, project submissions, ex online exams, that type of thing. How much easier for a student to sit in front of a computer at home and write his online test than have to get in the car, drive to university, get speeding fines, pay for parking, go there, get hijacked in the way. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Sitting at the comfort of your own home is fantastic, right? Why our platform is great. Quickly, it's always on. It's uh, based in Johannesburg. Okay. Uh, local currency, so you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. You can do whatever you want on it. You can load any operating system you like, and the resources available to you are infinite as well. If you need something very small, low, low performance, you can. If you need something massive, that's possible as well. Okay. You're selling a service to you, not a product. Okay. I'm not selling you equipment. There's no contracts or anything like that. And we monitor everything and worry about all the nitty-gritty for you, like the security, okay, like the compliance, right, so that you don't have to worry about those things. Okay, We're, one thing that we see as a great vision for African education is helping to foster this thing, this idea of an education community cloud, when bandwidth providers, and service providers, and content providers can work together and leverage something like our platform. To, you know, for the betterment of education on the continent. Because we're local and because we peer with all of the providers in a central place, our performance is fantastic. And the cloud being a fantastic driver for innovation again. And you can use it today if you want. Okay. Um, in, your, in your little packs that you got, you'll see a little brochure from us, instructions on how to sign up. Please try it out. We'll give you a thousand rand credit on the platform. Spin up whatever you want to do. Try some things. Okay. Speak to us, myself, and my colleague uh, at the back there are here the whole day as well. And uh, please make use of this promotional code. Costs you nothing. And uh, who knows? You can do something great with it. Thank you. <laughs>